if we could start with maybe the cuboid, would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. So cuboid is uh, one of the one of the newer ranges. Um, you can find on our website. You'll be able to find for all of the ranges. You'll be able to have a there's a mini configurator so you can check out the beam angle options, the size options, uh, and easy click between one and the other. Um, so here's one we made earlier. This is the medium size. Cuboid is available in three sizes, 90, 120, and 160. That size basically represents the, uh, the length of the side of the cube. This is, it's basically a cube, the cuboid, yeah. um, hence the name, with the base being an integral part of the cube. So you have the base adjusts by up to 90 degrees. Yeah. You can see here. Um, it then rotates the rotation. This one's, uh, this one's actually locked but you've got 240, we're just gonna unlock this. So these can be locked into position once they've been installed. Uh, the base rotates 120 degrees in each direction. So Brilliant. this gives you a large amount of adjustability without it looking like it's just a floodlight on, a, on a, an ugly bracket. So even once installed, once you've pointed it, you've still got a very discreet, very smart looking cube on the wall. Um, the other really interesting feature, and it's one of the things that sets this apart, from a lot of other uh, uh, floodlights and projectors, uh, each of the each of the uh, of the LEDs has its own different optic. Uh, um, and what you can do compared to to other products is we have a series of uh, I think we have five different uh, optic solutions as standard. Uh, so you have a, a, a narrow beam um, spot, which is a 14 degree, a medium 30 30 35 degree beam angle. Uh, 60, a 60 degree flood and uh, a wide angle diffuse. Um, That's amazing. So just, just the website, to be able to show that on the website is amazing. Really, really good, really good feature. Yeah, we're very happy about that. Yeah, it's um, really good. It's one of the things that Andres is very proud of. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> so the other great thing is because of the way the product is designed, um, it's very easy for project requirements for us to play around with the optical solutions uh, within this particular range, um, and it, it's it's a very it's a very modular product in the way it's built. So, uh, if you have specific uh, project requirements, say for asymmetric or or, or very wide, very narrow beam uh, uh, like grazing effects, if you're trying to do wool washing, uh, we can very easily re-engineer this particular range of cuboid and one of the new ranges which is coming out in the autumn. Uh, have this feature where the optics are exceedingly modular uh, and, and can follow project requirements very closely. That's amazing. Um, That's really yeah. nice. So I just noticed on the side of the cuboid that we've got these little um, kind of markings. What do yeah. they indicate? So the markings indicate uh, they're at five degree intervals. So each of those markings is a five degree interval for positioning. So you can position it very precisely. Um, yeah. So if, if the lighting designer has positioned it very specifically in a, in a scheme. Um, it's very easy for, for us to, to, for you to be able to prepare the products before they're put up on the wall. Um, and just to show you a bit more also about the inside of one of the castings, uh, oh, as brilliant. you can see, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of, not a lot of knowledge goes into this. You have a, a great number, all these fins you can see are all assisting with the heat dissipation. So they yep. help the, yeah. the, the heat get out of the, uh, of the castings uh, quicker. And one of the other really interesting features we have, this black area you can see, this is, uh, this is basically where the cable entry point is. And the cables are, uh, are all resonated. So um, they are, they're unsheathed. So you, you go down, you strip it down to bare, bare, uh, bare wire, and then it's sunk in a, in a resin bar so that you don't have any capillary action. Uh, wow. so you, don't have, wow. you don't have water sucked up through the, uh, through the, through the cable sheathing. Uh, when you turn the product off and on, it's it's uh, very very well uh, waterproofed and it's designed to remain waterproof over time. That's amazing. That's a really really good feature. So you were saying that they can do individual optics. So could I? Yes, you, yeah. you could. Each of, each of those squares could be uh, could have its own separate optic. Obviously, you wouldn't combine too many things in there because it would just end up being very confusing. But yeah. it has you a great deal of control uh, over where the light's going. So, uh, as I said, if you have very specific requirements for project, something you can do, uh, uh, which isn't something that that many products will be able to do. Uh, so it puts it in slightly, you know, it's a bit more of a niche, but it's a niche that uh, 
that allows it uh, great elasticity compared to, to other projectors. And what kind of, what sizes does that fit in common? So we have a 90, a 120 and a 160 on the cuboid. This is the 90 that you see here. Uh, 120 has nine optics. So this is a 120 that you see here. Yeah. And the body I was showing you, this is the body for the 160. So this has 16 individual lighting points, uh, which uh, with their own. So you've got, it's basically a four by four grid, uh, the three by three on the, on, the, on the intermediate and a two by two on the smallest version. Okay, okay, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So we've got a few different options there. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go mad, we'll go crazy. Um, so is there anything else in the, with the cuboid that you would like to, that you think is a feature with the fitting? It's like, it's really like flexible. It's a brilliant fitting for, for the likes of us, for a lighting designer, it looks like it's a brilliant fitting. It yeah. is one of the more evolved products within the, within the product range. It's been, it was, it was a, a sort of starting point for the, for, for Lambda to, to sort of make a push to, to, uh, to go more industrial, uh, sorry, more commercial mm. on, uh, uh, on the product range. So yeah, yeah, those um, lighting designers will love the uh, flexibility that we have with the product, which is brilliant. <laughs> um, so could we maybe chat about the um, Lyra and the Myra? Okay, so yeah, uh, these are these are these have been in the in the product range a bit longer, um, but they have been re-engineered in recent years. So Lyra, uh, the Lyras, and the uh, and the Mira range. Are a series of three different body sizes. So we have uh, the two sizes, two sizes for the for the for recess the and three sizes for the lira. Um, the idea with the with these ranges is you have uh, within the same sort of series of bodies, uh, you have a whole range of in ground for the mira uh, and uh, and surface mount uh, and wall mount for the for the the lira. Uh, uh, again, they are. Uh, quite well qualified technically. So you have uh, quite a high IK rating. Uh, each of these, you might not be able to see this, but this also has, uh, this also has the, the grading system on the side. So you can, you can position these very precisely. Oh, brilliant. Um, so it has the five degree um, element. Yeah. Brilliant. It has that, and it also has a, a ridge on the, on the actual body. So you can position them very precisely. Yeah, uh, that's brilliant. So you have a, a, a Christmas uh, this is a this is a, a spun out a turned aluminium uh, body uh, and head in all cases, so uh, very uh, very resistant to cat to to the elements because it's uh, it's a very pure alloy that's used for for for, for um, dining parts. So really good for particularly for the in ground for low level lighting. Uh, it's something that gives it a very good uh, mechanical and chemical resistance. What about um, by the sea? We are pretty confident, uh, well, all of the products, because Lambda has a, a really great uh, thing that not that many companies have, uh, apart, from, uh, apart from the Bugatti group behind it. Uh, Lambda does all its, uh, its the, the, the painting is done in-house. Um, so it gives us great control over, uh, over the quality of the surface before the paint is applied. Um, so we do, uh, you know, we have our own, uh, we can't tell you because it's a, it's a family secret, but uh, we we have our own um, uh, our own process for cleaning the products off before they're painted. Um, uh, there's a priming uh, that the products go through before before the final paint application. Uh, and if there are any issues with QC, they're picked up immediately uh, at the uh, at the paint plant because it's part of Lander. Uh, it's actually just across the road uh, from where we are now. Um, and again, it's uh, it's uh, it's been uh, I mean, the paint plant has been running for for part of the company almost since the beginning, uh, but it's been updated very regularly, and it allows us also the other strong point the company has it allows us to be very elastic with uh, uh, with projects where we have specific color requests. We do have the option of being able to uh, to deal with them all in house. Um, it tends to be you know it's the same two colors that go all the time. So anthracite. And uh, <clears throat> what we call rust finish, which is basically a core 10 finish, uh, but on, a, on an aluminum body. They're the two most popular finishes, but uh, we can do just about anything uh, that we need to for projects because uh, it's all controlled in house. And are both, so, are both of those finishes good if you're by the coast, if you're near the sea? Sorry, that's what I was asking earlier on. Is it good when it's by the sea? 
Um, tu, dei due hai qualche, qualche, quali sono quelli che resistono meglio agli elementi secondo te? Come allora, valori? dividiamo le due cose. Questi hanno un tipo di finitura che hanno analizzata e questi stiamo tranquilli. Per Fuori, riguarda, I can speak Italian. Uh, sorry. No, it's good, it's okay, it's okay. I wish I could. I'm very jealous. E, e, Se vuoi fare per la calcio. Anche, per, sì, italiano. sì, va bene. E invece la finitura, quella poliestere, quella è anche quella buona, non è così resistente come questa, però parliamo di esperienze, come siamo detti, sì. che abbiamo avuto veramente pochissimi problemi e vendiamo in tutto il mondo. Um, so, the, the small, the lyres and the myras are the anodized processes, so this is actually a controlled oxidation process. Anodizing is... Uh, Uh, it, it, you're basically rusting in a controlled environment, uh, the, <clears throat> the surface of the aluminium. Uh, whereas the, so that can only be done, that can be done on, on turned parts, which are uh, almost entirely aluminium. Uh, when we're talking about die casting, die casting instead, you have to put a certain uh, 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 quantity of additional materials in your aluminium to die cast. So you have to add a number of things. So there's copper that's added to the, to the mix. Uh, uh, a silica sand, it's a sì. type of sand is added to the mix uh, because pure aluminium would be too brittle and too hard to inject into, uh, into die casting molds. So you have to put other metals that cause impurities in the metal to be able to inject it into a, a die casting mold. Um, the, the fact that you're adding, for example, copper and, and, and silica do create uh, uh, weaknesses because copper is water soluble over time, uh, so copper will eventually, uh, would eventually break down. Um, Nanda have, over the years, and we're talking since 1987 when it was founded, so we're now 30, almost 35 years into, into things here. We've had a, we've been working, uh, uh, we've been working as area managers for the UK for 25 of those 35 years almost. The QC issues we've had in, Uh, and, you know, around, uh, around Britain and Ireland over the years have been minimal. Uh, painting is slightly more susceptible, die casting is slightly more susceptible, uh, but experience has, has uh, um, you know, our experiences over 25 years working with the, with the, with the, with the company have been uh, exceedingly, exceedingly uh, good. You know, it's all aluminium die casting will eventually give up on seafront applications. Landers and aluminium die casting will give up after a long, long time. Uh, we, we can literally, we can count the issues on, uh, you know, on the fingers of one hand over the years. Yeah, well, that's good to know. That's really good to know. But if I use the Lyra or the Myra because that's a different material, it's not, um, mm. if I'm right, it's not, it's not die cast aluminium, am I right? It's not die cast yet. So yeah, they are. So they is, are, they're perfectly fine by the sea, right? They are perfectly fine by the sea. And even on the die casting, we are, you know, we've, we've, we've had, very few problems over the years. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, it's, yeah. Usually, it's usually down to uh, either installed as damaging paintwork or during installation or people, uh, uh, you know, people actually going over it with, with something that scratches the surface. Yeah, it's yeah, I've seen it before to... where clients have tried to clean, um, clean fittings and they, the material that they're using are, is actually wearing down the coating that, you know, that protects it from the sea. So I've seen that before myself um, with other brands. Uh, but just getting back to the product itself, the Myra is really interesting because I know we talk about it in relation to in-ground, but it also can be wall-mounted as well, right? We have a great, uh, a great uh, range of, of wall-mounted Uh, side emission options, so you can yeah. pull resources, you can ceiling mount it, uh, uh, you can, you know, there, there are lots and lots of different options. Uh, on the wall mount, you have a, a number of side emission options, including a really interesting piece, which is the LT, the 45 LT, so this is the body of the, uh, of the, of the, of the mirror. Uh, this has an additional, um, an additional front part, we say, which allows the LED light source to be mounted Uh, at a total right angle to the wall. So it's really, really good for projecting the light sideways, say, if you're trying to project it down a wall uh, or, you know, if you're trying to illuminate something, a feature on the wall, it's a really good product for pinpointing uh, an architectural feature, um, but still very discreet. We're talking, uh, uh, this, is a, um, this is a three and a half centimeter diameter body. This one sticks out probably by around about three centimeters. So really, really smart, really discreet. 
um, and it allows you to just have uh, uh, basically a product turned on its side, illuminating your wall uh, from the side rather than, than, than trying to yeah. shine the light yeah. sideways from a front facing LED. And that can also be used in the ground as well, which is which is lovely because you can keep the family. Um, you know, I think it's it's a really nice option. Just with that though, like those fittings are very small. So, what do we do with the driver? Um, so the drivers, we would personally we would suggest you have two different options. Obviously, this it's generally the installing uh, electrician that would decide this. Um, so the larger products we have mains voltage, and you don't have the problem with the drivers. Um, Anything uh, low voltage, we would either suggest that uh, uh, we, we supply most of the products with IP rated connectors, so uh, they can be connected black. We, we actually have one here. Where is the connector? Uh, connector. So almost all the products are supplied with IP68 68 connectors for doing the electrical connection. So this basically works uh, that you have, you, you put your connection in, uh, you, you screw it into place, and then as it's closed, Where's this one for the Kitty National? Okay. As you then, you know, you put this, the, the cable band goes over the outside and it locks that connector block in. So this is a full IP68 connector that you see here. And it's one of the options we go for on most of our products uh, because it allows you a, a full, uh, you know, this can be, this can just be buried in the ground as it is. Um, then for the drivers, we'd suggest either IP rated enclosures uh, within, within the vicinity of the products or uh, you can go back if the, obviously the correct sections need to be used for the cables. You can go back to your main switchboard and have yeah. them in the, which is always a safer option. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, no, I've I've used um, small ones in my home there, and uh, we used waterproof uh, waterproof box um, for those drivers, so it seems to seems to work. Uh, well, this is uh, that has been in the range uh, roughly uh, uh, five six years. I think this started. Uh, this has recently been uh, been given a big brother. So the LACO, <clears throat> this is a, a, a backwards-facing LED, which is in the top of the fitting, um, and it shines light downwards. It can either be a single or a double emission. Uh, and there's just, uh, just pulling up the, the web page for the LACO. So uh, this is the, the little brother. Yeah. So I'm just going to show you that, if you can see. Uh, this is the single emission version you can see here, and you can see there's a, there's a, there's a diffuser here and an LED circuit board in the top here. Yeah. Uh, this has recently been given a big brother, which, uh, which is this one you see here. So the head on this one is 13 and a half centimeters against the 52 millimeters on the small version. Uh, the large version obviously is a much, much uh, larger, much, much sturdier uh, uh, body. So uh, again, very well suited for commercial applications it will take a hell of a beating before uh, it takes any damage. And with there is a, the standard version comes with a, a bayonet fixing system and a steel wire to fix the heads to the, uh, to the, to the poles. Uh, and as an option, this is also available with uh, a, a, an anti-vandal grub screw to hold the head in place uh, so that people don't, uh, don't try and uh, pick them off. Uh, as you can see, this is a much, much sturdier animated body uh, and it is designed more for people. Um, also here, the head, you have uh, dedicated circuit boards on the two sides. So the diffusers here house a dedicated uh, LED, which has a, a greater throw than the large, uh, than the small version. So uh, it's a, a more efficiently designed product because we have more space here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's gorgeous. I absolutely love that product. I tested it out in my own garden there last week. I don't know if you saw it. It was on um, our social media, but it was... Stunning, really, really fabulous. Um, so I'm really impressed with that fitting. Um, so do you want to take us then to some of the kind of unusual, more unusual products that you guys have got? Okay, so we have the unexpected range, which we intend uh, will become a constant feature within the within the catalogue over the next uh, over the next <laughs> five to ten years. Um, Two products were launched this year for the unexpected range. Number one. Okay, no, we'll start with the nest. We'll start with the nest. Sorry. Sorry, I, I didn't. Uh, just, Get the head of yourself there, there Daniel. <laughs> nest. Okay, so the nest is, um, the nest is, is, was inspired by nature. As most of the unexpected products are, nature is always a strong source of inspiration. Uh, the nest 
as you can see, is very similar to a bird's nest. So this is actually, it's a metal frame uh, with a, a high power LED in the base. Um, the top part, obviously there's a metal framework and a, uh, a, a this is actually a willow uh, based material that you see here. So uh, it's a natural fiber that is treated, it's, it's, it's passivated so it, don't, it doesn't uh, deteriorate over time. Um, it's basically a very discreet way of illuminating trees and the likes of. Uh, there is an additional accessory which you see here, which allows us to uh, it allows us to um, to close the product off at the top. So uh, it's designed so that you won't have birds or leaves building up in the product. Uh, and there, you did you're, you're better at, uh, at this than me. Um, so there's an additional option to make sure that uh, you don't get build up of dirt, leaves, or or, or birds in the product. Um, and the whole idea is you can use this for uh, you can use this for uh, for illuminating trees from within the tree canopy. So you're yeah. taking the light much closer to where it needs to be, uh, and you can position it so you're not throwing vast amounts of light up into the air, but it's all remaining within the tree canopy. So uh, this is the first of the of the options. Um, uh, did you say there was resin used on the willow to give it yeah. shape? Is that to, to maintain its shape? Uh, so the resin is basically used so that the willow uh, it, it basically sees it holds the it holds the natural uh, degrading of the material. So it is a biodegradable material. The resin that's used basically holds the uh, it, it means it doesn't break down over the course of a of one winter season, but it will remain uh, in good shape for years to come. Okay, can I can you scroll up there, um, Andrea, just to show us the picture of the tree um, on the website? It just looks amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so here, for example, we actually have two or three, three different, uh, there are three different nest products that are uh, hidden in that image. There are three nests hidden in that fitting, illuminating the canopy of that tree. The great thing, as I was saying, once, if you put this on the branch of a tree, it just disappears into the background. Yeah. Uh, it just becomes part of the, part of the, of the natural product. Um, we're just going to look for that image that you were after. So we're just going to show it to you uh, from uh, uh, full screen. Um, so this is that tree that you saw with the lights off during the day. So it literally looks like it's got three nests on the branches. Yeah. Uh, that same tree, when it's illuminated at nighttime, uh, looks something something like... Uh, um, that was the that's the daytime. And that same tree, when illuminated at night, looks something like this. But this is shown from below. Uh, but yeah. this is basically the tree the, the tree top that you saw. It's gorgeous. Uh, so um, it just disappears into the woodwork basically. Uh, and that was the, the inspiration was to make it look as uh, discreet. Um, uh, as possible. Yeah. And, uh, so that's that's one of the two. Uh, now we have uh, we have some images of projects on the way for for the uh, for the, the the nest. We've uh, done a couple of large projects on continent, uh, you know, on the continent in Europe, and one actually in an African country. As soon as we have images, we'll be sharing them on the website. Nice. And I'm, I'm going to move on to the other of the unexpected products, which is the firefly. So. This is the 90 centimeter, the 60 centimeter version of the Firefly. Again, this is uh, this one's made out of uh, uh, this is turned aluminium, so very good resistance to the elements, um, with a glass diffuser on the top. Uh, so this, um, the idea, the inspiration for this was fireflies. So uh, the idea is it's got uh, it's lower light output than the nest. This has got a warm glow to it. It's also available. Uh, as an optional, uh, uh, there's yeah, also an RGB yeah. version available on request for this. Um, so you have three different uh, ground versions, which can be either plinth mounted or on a spike. Um, and uh, you have four different finishes as standard, uh, white, uh, black, green, and actually it's not black, it's graphite. Um, white, black, green, and the, and the, the, uh, the rusty finish. And um, we also do a pendant version here. Mm -hmm. The whole idea here is it's, it's a playful piece. The idea is you can, you know, you can put groups of them uh, in, in an, in, in, you know, you can play around between suspended and, and ground versions uh, and just create 
plays of light within the uh, within a space. Um, so we see we have a few ambient shots there. Not ambient, happy questions. So I'll answer that. It's a fabulous <laughs> vision. Um, I was even thinking of using it in my own uh, my own garden. It's just gorgeous. Like, and it's it's a great it's, playful piece. It's yeah, really good. Absolutely. Also, um, I'm working on a project at the moment where I'm using it just within uh, um, you know uh, areas where you've got like shrubberies and plants. It allows you to create incredible. Uh, it's it's bright enough to create light and shadow uh, effects on the surrounding walls. Uh, it's not so bright that it becomes uh, an eyesore when you're looking at it. So it's got this lovely warm glow. Uh, it's a two watt LED in there. It's strong enough to to create a visible presence without being a, a source of uh, of bother at night. So it's it's a really cool piece. We're very very happy with this one. Yeah, no, it's fabulous. Um, okay, guys, I think is that is that all yeah, the products? Yeah, yeah, that's showed uh, that, me everything that we we want to look at. Today. Yeah.